Welcome to Restoring the Antique Free Sewing Machine, Part 4. Just uh, going to go around the machine here and reassemble everything. If you notice, my narration uh, is a little bit off. I've had a lot of trouble uh, syncing the voiceover to the video. I think that's because I'm speeding up the video uh, four times, four times its actual speed. So. What I've noticed is that then the the audio gets out of sync. So I apologize for that in the previous three videos. I'll try and take a little pause at the end and uh, let everything catch up. Ah, uh, let's see. Here am I um, getting this faceplate on. I'm going around, putting the needle plate on. Side cover. I was actually surprised as I got into this. I, I uh, more or less remembered where everything went. This is the bobbin winder. Make sure that's all together. The other thing you'll notice, you know, I, I've said this before, and I appreciate everyone's kind words. Everyone's been uh, very supportive and um, encouraging on all the various forums. Um, you know, I really, I really, uh, despite what it may, what may appear, I really do not know <laughs> what I'm doing at all here. So, you know, you, you'll see me mess up. You'll you'll see things go wrong uh, haywire, and that's sort of my intention with this channel, with these videos. I, I want to put content out that's not widely available, and I haven't seen, you know, real ground-up restoration of one of these machines uh, with explanations. So that's one of the reasons I wanted to get into this. The other thing is I, you know, I, I don't want to present an edited version of what goes on in the shop. Clearly, I'm editing for time. Yeah, I don't, I don't work at four times actual speed, but. Um, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to try to present some glossy version of what things are like in my shop. I I want to just have sort of a look at what it what really goes on. So if I screw up, you'll see it. If I get something right, you'll see it. But uh... all right, so I'm working on this tensioning mechanism, and I'm gonna run out of time on this clip. We'll pick this back up. The tensioning mechanism is completely fouled up. I tried repeatedly here, different configurations, trying to figure out what's going on in there. And um, what I eventually ended up doing, I, I believe the tension mechanism was broken at some point. And what I ended up doing here is just taking a pair of round nose pliers and cobbling up my own end for the take up spring. I can't I can't seem to get the take up spring to work with the tension discs to work um, you know with the washer and um, none of the pieces well I mean the tension discs are are fairly standard and I, I imagine that the uh, part of the take up spring that's in the machine is probably original but it was clearly messed with over the years it's clearly been been broken uh, there were two parts of it you know, two separate parts, and they had they had cobbled together with some sort of a weird aluminum collar that doesn't uh, doesn't seem to go anywhere. So I fussed with this just for probably um, fifteen or twenty minutes, just trying to see you know what what the heck is going on in there, uh, and then I just decided to make my own take up spring end, I put the two tension discs on, and uh, there's that collar. That d does not go with the machine, I don't think. It has a thread that doesn't fit anything. When I originally took the machine apart, it was in the back. 
I think it was just like space. It was like set in there like a spacer. Um, yeah, I looked at as many pictures of these things as I could online. They all seem to have a different, a slightly different setup um, in all the pics. So in the end, what I ended up doing, as I say, I just sort of shaped the um, take-up spring. I, I put the two discs on. And then the uh, little beehive spring or bee skep spring. Uh, and then over the top of that beehive spring, this little rubber washer that um, was on there as well. I, I really don't think any of this is right. So... Um, that's going to be, if you know, assuming that I can get this thing to stitch and, and get it all working, that's going to be obviously one of the first things I need to, to do. I have to rebuild, um, make a little knurled. There should be a knurled nut that goes over. That's evident in all the pictures that goes over the threaded post for the tension assembly, and that knurled nut is completely missing. Still just working on the tension assembly. Now that I'm narrating, it seems obvious, but it uh, took me a while to figure it out. All right, so I had family visiting and uh, spent the day with them. I'm back in the shop now. You can see that was the one broken end of the tension assembly. That's the other end, um, and I just made that little loop and catch there. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So I kind of, you know, I worked on this all in the, in the morning and then went and spent a day with family. When I came back, I, I just had decided to uh, assemble it in the simplest manner possible. I'm most likely going to end up having to make um, springs and certainly that little threaded, that knurled nut that goes over the post. I'll have to make that. Um, that little tripod washer is what was on there when I took it apart. I, I don't, uh, it it's, appears in some pictures like that's what's on there, but not all of them. That's the beehive spring and it's way too loose. It does not seem stiff enough at all. It's malformed. It's really gotten gacked. And that's that weird little rubber washer. That is not even a real sewing machine part. That's what was on the tension assembly. So that's, um, you know, this whole assembly looked like it was just hacked together by someone to just keep the machine running. I'm just checking the play on my little homemade uh, check spring, tension spring, just making sure that it uh, goes up the same amount as the take-up lever. All right, so that's the, the washer, or the, the it was used as a little washer. But um, I'm, I don't think I'm going to include that in the build. I think that was just pulled off of some other thing and put put back there for a spacer. So here's the shuttle uh, back in, whipping around. I promised you a little shot of the shuttle whipping around. And one thing that's kind of cool, uh, the um, that little spring that holds the front cover on so that when you tip, you know, when you tip your machine into the cabinet, the front cover is the one uh, that, that can fall off. Which is funny because I often find the back covers to be tighter. Um, but that little spring kind of holds it in, in place. And the other neat thing that that spring does, it, you just push down on it and it pops the uh, shuttle right up. Kind of, I mean, it's kind of nifty. You just use your finger on the Singer 27s, at least the, the one that I have. All right, I was happy with the uh, shuttle mechanism. It actually appeared to be... Um, you know, timed correctly. If you if you go back and look at that clip, there's a little there's a little bit of a, a slop on the needle bar, and I wonder maybe if a bushing isn't worn or something. I may when I when I pull that assembly out, um, I'll have to look very carefully at all of that. The the needle bar goes up, and then goes back down. It bobs back down for a split second, and then goes up again. Um, hopefully, this shouldn't affect it. Uh, as soon as it starts coming up, the the loop is formed. And the uh, the point of the shuttle is right there, so it really should it should work. Based on what I'm I'm seeing here, uh, put trying to trying to fit the feed dog mechanism in here. 
I had the needle plate on because I wanted to lower the presser foot. Um, and, and now the needle plate's in the way. So I took the needle plate off, popped the feed dogs in. They're held uh, firmly with that little screw that I couldn't remember where that went. That one right there. All right, there's your feed dogs. They seem to be working. Try the stitch length lever. See if the movement is ostensibly uh, changed. And it certainly looks like it. Certainly looks like it. I believe I turn it back up here in a minute. Yeah, there you can see. So that's all the way up. All right, feed dogs are in place. Get this needle plate back on. Just checking all the motion. Just keep checking. Looking forward to getting this thing back into the cabinet, see if it can't uh, throw a stitch. It's moving very, very smoothly now, so the, um, the lubrication that I put up in that column really seems to be doing the trick. There's no hint of a catch any longer. So I'm, I'm guessing probably it was run without oil at some point, enough to create a little burr or something. Um, that penetrating oil doesn't, doesn't really lubricate. All right, so these are all the uh, parts that are left over. Uh, this uh, drive pulley cover was in the cabinet, but not on the head. So that was just sitting in the cabinet. I'm uh, missing a screw for that. I'll have to make a screw to get that on there. This little foot, weird little foot, also in the cabinet, not on the head, so that's not going back. And this screw, if anybody knows what that is, feel free to leave a comment if you would. I, I have no idea. It was in the cabinet, not on the machine. This was in the machine. Obviously not going back yet. Uh, needle was in the machine. That's not going back in there. It's all rusted. And the last two parts are this little collar and the check spring, which were on the machine, but I'm not putting them back. All right, time to turn attention to the cabinet. Just uh, knocking the big dirt off. Getting it cleaned up. Right, get it opened up. Again, I'm not looking to do too much to this right now. Just want to get it under power, get everything running in, and, uh, and then we'll really go at it. And here we're just putting the screws back into the mounting lugs. Get those things in there. Tighten them up. All right, time to make a belt. I, um, I do work at a boxing gym. I run a little boxing club. And uh, we got these leather jump ropes that just got a little deteriorated. I figured old leather jump rope would make a perfect little leather belt here. Save me from having to make a belt. I may have to end up making one anyway. Um, I'm not sure that... Uh, these old ropes will work out. They're brittle. They, you know, they, they get used quite a bit before they're... Uh, obviously, if I have them for this, they're broken. So they've already broken. So here I'm just fiddling with the, the position of the bobbin winder. Um, never, I'm never really sure which side those are meant to go on. I just look and see if the belt is interfering with the cabinet, and I go on whichever side the belt doesn't interfere. Uh, I've marked it, and I'm just going to snip the ends off and uh, take it into the leather shop. Alright, so got the belt, the clip, and all. And I just mark the positions and uh, pierce them. You want to make sure your fingers are on either side of the awl so that if the leather rips or something happens, you're not jamming that thing right into your finger. It can look, when you when you look at me doing this, it can kind of look like I'm just poking it right into my fingers, but I'm, I'm very careful to make sure that that all is in between them, and if anything should happen, it's it's already past uh, where it can hurt my fingers. All 
All right, so I closed one end, but uh, not the other, so that I can take it out, take it apart and thread it through. And uh, one thing I didn't notice is that the um, the end of this had become ripped, and that became obvious when I tried to to put it on. It uh, it ripped right out. I went to close the um, clip, and the end that I had closed in the in the uh, sewing lab in my leather shop had ripped, ripped right off. Uh, so I just cleaned it up and um, went and got some leather conditioner. So we'll just get that end uh, saturated with some leather conditioner. Might be able to soak this whole thing and uh, save it for long-term use. All right, that leather conditioner seemed to do the trick. I uh, got it on there without further incident, and hopefully it'll just hold together long enough to try this uh, little experimental sewing here. Oiling everything up, my, my plan is to run this thing at high speed with everything oiled just to get oil everywhere. So here we go. Uh, just letting it run for a while and get everything lubricated. Let's get this bobbin winder oiled up and uh, see about winding a bobbin. Why not? So we got this thread out of the uh, cabinet, one of the drawers of the cabinet, and uh, putting a bobbin in the winder. See what happens. I changed the angle of it so that um, you guys could see better, and it um, was pretty. <laughs> it was on a spot of the floor. It was really stable before, and then when I changed it to give you a better look, uh, with the light behind it, it got real rocky on the floor. So sorry about that. But uh, there it goes. Just a wind in that bobbin. All right, so. Here I'm just threading the machine and um, got a needle that was in the cabinet. There were several needles in one of the drawers. So I put one of the um, one of the needles from the drawer in the needle bar. I bring you guys in for a closer look here when I when I go to see um, when I go to grab the thread for the first time I'll, I'll bring the camera in and um, I'm using my light to see, so the glare will wash it out for a minute, but then I tip the light up, and if you just pause it right there, when I do that, it's coming up. Uh, I don't think I can tell you with audio because it's out of sync, um, but you'll see, I'll wash it out with a flashlight, and then I'll tip it up so that you can get a look, and if you pause it right there, uh, there's a couple frames where you can really see the needle right, right behind the uh, shuttle tip. So, no timing issues. And it snatches that loose loop up just as... So, bed plate back on. That's the um, piece of denim that was in the cabinet that had the stitch samples on it. And uh, here I go for the inaugural stitch. I'm all excited. And there's no movement whatsoever on that fabric. Doesn't move at all. See that? Dead in the water. You can see the thread coming up through. Um, one thing, I will say this, they do, they do feed, they both threads feed right out beautifully. So back up under the thing, we're going to uh, just loosen this screw here that controls, that, that sort of uh, adjusts the feed dogs it lets them come up and down right up and down in that on the bar so I adjusted them upward and uh, we'll have another go we'll have another try this time you can see that it is feeding the fabric so adjusting the feed dogs worked 
um, but um, the stitch looked suspiciously like uh, the the samples that were on that dent. All right, so now we get into uh, the fussing and the fiddling and the trying. Well, you can see those feed dogs now are just feeding beautifully. Just a very positive, nice feed. Um, doing tight circles and everything, but it's just bunching thread up, just bunching thread up on top. It's not good. So I'm backing the tension right off. Backing that tension right off. Trying again. Uh, I'm sort of trying to sew and watch and look and pay attention and see and, and, and kind of look at everything as I go. And one thing I noticed, the geometry of that take-up spring, uh, it wasn't holding the thread. So I kind of tweak the geometry of that take-up spring somewhere in here. I'm sure it happens but there, right there. So just tweaking the geometry of that take-up spring, kind of seeing if I can get it to hold the thread a little better. And uh, tightening the needle plate. I felt like a little, like the needle plate was a little loose. There we go again, trying it again. And that's uh, a little better, but not, you know, it's not really good. So what I end up doing is just taking that, that washer right off. And now it's uh, just the two tension discs, the beehive spring, and that little weird rubber grommet, which I will eventually replace with a, with a nice knurled uh, nut. That made a huge difference. That um, little tension adjustment, taking the washer out, made a big, big difference. So um, what I did was go get this white, this old uh, towel. It's like an old tea towel, old dish towel. And it's white, so I thought it would allow me to see the... All right, so one thing that I noticed when I switched to this little dish towel, uh, the contrast was greater, and I really could see the presser foot jumping up. Uh, that presser foot was jumping up uh, every time quite a bit. So I tightened the tension down on the presser foot. I have uh, the spring contacted, contacting directly onto the tension discs. And uh, with a little increase in presser foot tension and loosening up the, um, loosening up the thread tension on, on upper tension, it really, it really started to act right. Um, you know, it's really starting to stitch both sides. You can see that top stitch there is actually has a stitch on both sides. It's not the best. It's not a real even stitch, um, but but it is it is sort of working. Uh, obviously, I need to to rebuild that tension mechanism. Um, you know, that's no good. Can't have that that goofy tension mechanism like that. But uh, it is it is. You know, it's stitching. It's doing a fair job. And you, you could make something if you had to with it. It's not uh, not the most even stitch in the world, but... Um, considering the thread, you know, the tension mechanism was completely gacked. I, uh, I just threw one more stitch line in there because it took me this long to remember that this machine had a thread cutter. So I just wanted to... Um, just wanted to use a thread cutter.